everybody. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a 3D Aurora, and around Aurora, we have the good fairies that are kind of floating and just kind of going around her. If you wanted to make it more wearable, just skip the fairies and you can have a really cute 3D Aurora. I hope you love this video as much as I do, and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So we are going to begin with an overlay of a glittery, slightly bluish, clearish background color. Such a pretty color, and this one actually glows in the dark. I don't have the pictures of it glowing in the dark because I don't necessarily think it goes with this design, but if you like the color and you like that it's glow in the dark, there will be the color name in the description box below. So it's just a funny little extra tidbit of information there. So we're going to encapsulate that color with a layer of clear acrylic and then file it into shape with our e-file basic steps that we always take whenever we're doing an overlay such as this. Now with a narrow bit, I'm going to be carving in little grooves for where I want the wires to be placed that are going to be supporting the good fairies. Of course, if you were going to be skipping the good fairies, obviously you would skip this step as well. But if we are going to be adding them in after you have those little grooves in place and you're going to want to go through and actually attach the bits of wire. I am not using nail glue for this. I, if you watch my channel all the time and you know my feelings on nail glue, I think it's self-explanatory, but otherwise if you're like nail glue, what did you have against nail glue? It's not that I have anything against nail glue. It's that nail glue has a problem with me and it grabs onto me and I glue myself to whatever I'm working on. And then you get a, a piece of little pink glove in every single nail that I use nail glue in. So there's that. Anyways, you can, I just attach them with more, uh, more of the acrylic. If you are a nail glue fan and nail glue doesn't seem to hate you either, then go ahead and use it and then cover it with some acrylic. But either way, make sure there's acrylic completely going up and over that piece of wire. Now that we have that done, we're going to go through with some, you know, light tannish color. We're going to be sculpting Aurora's head shape and her neck. If you want to sculpt her bigger, then you're going to want to start with a bigger head shape, but I kind of wanted her to still be kind of small. I wanted to include a good portion of her dress. The other thing I want to mention is because I sculpted her dress pink, I did a blue background. If you are going to be sculpting her in blue, then you would want to do a pink background. So decide ahead of time what color you want her dress to be, because if, you, if you're familiar with the movie, you know that her dress gets zapped back and forth, pink, blue, pink, blue, and it may be either color. It could be either color. It's whichever one you prefer. I decided to take the route I did because I wanted to use that blue sparkly background because it's just one that I love so much. I love that color. And so I was like, well, if the background's going to be blue, her dress is going to be pink. So there we have it. That is the whole story. But then we're going to take, I added a little bit of her hair. I'm going to do one section of her hair at a time. If you do a section of hair and then you leave it and do a little bit more, you'll get a really lovely layered look. So it'll look like her hair is some extra dimension, extra height to it. I'm going to be sculpting her dress with pink. As we mentioned, make sure that you're looking at really high quality reference photos whenever you're sculpting any character. Really anything. Whenever you're, you know, doing any kind of art, I highly recommend getting some good reference photos. But if you're sculpting a character, you really don't want to work from memory unless you have a photographic memory or an eidetic memory, which I would say mine is, honestly, I would say mine's really close. And my husband would say it is an eidetic memory, but I wouldn't trust myself to, to sculpt a character because you never know. There's so many things that you just might not pick up on. So if you have a reference photo, anytime you second guess yourself, you can just quickly take a glance at it and you can solve these things. So even for the minutia of the angles of say the small of her back, if you have a reference photo, you can circle back and check on that. So after we have the dress sculpted in, I'm going to be sculpting in the little bits of that uh, little trim that kind of go around her waist. There's a lot of angles on Aurora, actually more than what you would typically think of for a good character or, you know, the nice guys. Typically, all of those angles are reserved for villains in, in animation. Um, but Aurora has a lot of angles. She's got her crown is actually comes to like a really sharp point on the top. She's got a necklace that comes to a point. There's the trim around her waist. All of those come to points. And then she's got the shoulders that come out. So it's actually, she's a character that I find kind of at odds with what I would consider is the rules of animation. Not that there's really any rules to any art, which animation certainly is art. But in almost every other movie, you look at, you know, the villains, they've got sharp lines. The good guys, they have soft lines. That's just sort of the, the, rule, of, the rule of thumb. But she kind of breaks that, which works for me. But we're going to be adding in all of her sharp lines like I have been leading up to. I'm going to be adding more hair with more of that yellow. The yellow is just as sparkly as the background. One of the things about Aurora is that she has golden hair, which is one of the gifts that I don't remember which good fairy. One of the good fairies gave her. So to give her that really sparkly, glistening hair, I figured a yellow that has some sparkle built in would be a good way to go. 
So we're going to be using that. Again, color names can be found in the description box below. So if any of these trip your trigger, you can find them there. Most of them are double dip and those are the ones that I have linked. There are a few that I used that aren't double dip because um, I didn't have quite the right color. Those ones, I have Meriwether's, Meriwether's Blue is not one of them that's from Double Dip, but it's one that I don't really have a good way to share it with you. It's just an old color that I've had that is discontinued. So that one's not, not listed there. We're going to take more of that same yellow. We're going to be adding her crown, the same yellow as her hair. You can adjust it and make it distinct later, but for now it can just be sculpted with the same color. And then the last thing for sculpting on Miss Aurora is going to be the white trim that goes across her shoulders. So from the center of the dress across out to the edge of her shoulders and actually extends past her shoulders, do one side and then do the other. With this white acrylic, this is actually Koopa's Sculpture White. It is one that sculpts so beautifully and creates those height, the height of those types of details very, very well. So we're going to be using that. Didn't go quite as far, so I'm gonna be adding a touch more to the edge. And then once you are done with that, like I said, the sculpting on Aurora is pretty much, pretty much complete. So now you can either detail her or you can move on to sculpting the good fairies. So when we're sculpting them, you can pick uh, whichever one you want to start with. I'm going to start with Flora, who is the one in red. And it's actually more of like a really dark berry pink. I guess it kind of depends on where you see her. So I typically think of it as like a dark pink and um, like a light pink. But some places you see it's more like a red and a peach color. So I don't know. I'm going to go with the darker berry color and the pink color because I think it just, I don't know. So my preference of the colors. The one thing I want to say when you're sculpting these is they're so, so tiny. You want to sculpt them as tiny as you can. When they aren't um, magically human size, the good fairies are like hummingbird size or maybe a little bit bigger, but they're really, really small. Obviously compared to Aurora, mine are much bigger than hummingbird size, but I did sculpt them very small. One benefit of sculpting them so small is that you have a little bit of freedom to simplify things because it is very tiny. So there's some details that you can kind of just sort of skate over just because nobody's going to see them because they're so, so tiny. So just keep working on sculpting these. They are a, a tricky one again so small if you aren't somebody that really likes to sculpt things small if you know you're you know you're practicing you're working on it this is not something that you really would want to take on I understand um what I would do if that were the case is I would sculpt Aurora so if you're going to do this on say a set a full set of hands or a full set of hands that sounds like you're doing like multiple people now if you're going to sculpt this as a full set on a whole hand I would probably put Aurora on the middle finger and then I would sculpt the good fairies on the index uh, ring and pinky nails. Uh, thumb you would kind of have some freedom with. I'd probably, if it were me, I would put Maleficent on there because I couldn't resist. But adding just a little bit of evil into a very sweet, happy design otherwise, just kind of my style. But um, that would make it so that Aurora still has that kind of like surrounded by good fairies thing. They're, they're her guardian angels, basically. They're looking out for her. They're keeping her, keeping her safe. So I kind of just, you know, like that like that idea plus it's kind of nice to think that we all have a guardian angel out there surrounding us and keeping us safe so they're they're probably I don't know and they're hilarious they crack me up so if you weren't going to want to sculpt them this small then that would be my suggestion for their wings because their wings are kind of clear um I would do I used a clear and silver glitter so that they at least had something to kind of keep them visible so that they weren't totally invisible. The other thing that you want to keep in mind when you're sculpting these good fairies is if you do them in the same way that I did, where they're kind of surrounding sur surrounding Aurora, you want to pay attention to where you placed those wires so that when they're surrounding her, they all look like they're facing her. So if you have, so I have one that's kind of coming out of the upper right hand corner. So then you want to have, I did Flora where she's sort of almost like she's laying down on her stomach as far as the angle goes, looking down. And then I have one in the bottom right hand corner, which is where I'm going to be putting Meriwether. And so she's going to be kind of looking up and to and towards the middle of the nail and then the last one when I sculpt a fauna which you'll see in just a second she's the one in green then you're going to want to sculpt her since she's the one on the left of the nail facing the opposite direction so if you're finding your reference photos again high quality reference photos can't recommend it enough when you're finding your reference photos and you find some reference photos you like of the good fairies flying then you can help determine with that photo where to place those wires initially. So don't necessarily just place them willy nilly wherever you want them to go, you know, just kind of at random. You want to have a plan. You don't want to do anything without knowing a plan. That's kind of um, just a good 
a good thing to keep in mind, especially for something like this where you're going to be placing very specific items on on those wires. If it's something a little more randomized, if you're just making a cool design, it's abstract, it's not nearly as particular. But for something like this where you want the fairies to be all facing Aurora and look like they're they're looking at her with their wands out like they're going to save her from some great harm, then you want to make sure that they are all designed in a way that they will indeed face her. So with the good fairies, like I said, um, Flora has the pink and the and the berry color. Meriwether and um, Fauna have, you know, blue and light blue, green and light green. I'm not doing those secondary colors with the acrylic. I am just going to do, I'm picking a single color as the base color, whatever color is darker. So do, you know, the darker red, pinky red, the darker blue, the darker green. And then with acrylic paint, you're going to be adding in those lighter details because there's a lot fewer of them as far as the overall quantity of color so that you don't have to take and try to add all those different layers on such a small piece. Once you do have them all sculpted though, and they are going to be able to be removed from the nail form backing, so make sure that they really are set up nicely. They're not going to be bendy or sticky on the back still. A lot of times with acrylic, if it's not quite fully cured, it is tacky on the back, which occasionally is a good thing. In this case, it's not. Um, you're going to pop them off and then you're going to attach them to the wires. And while you're waiting for those to cure, you can bend your wires into place. So just curve them up a little bit. Really make sure that as you're bending them, you are supporting the part that is within the nail because that acrylic is very thin and it could very easily break. So you don't want to just start cranking on it. As you can see, I'm holding it down and pressing very firmly into the nail and then I'm bending it. Even with that, you may still run the risk of your acrylic breaking as I had the one piece did. So I'm just going to repair any of those places that need it. And then once that's done and they are nicely secured in there, you can cut off any extra wire, which there very well could be wire. That one wants to spin on me, but that's fine. Um, we can get that nice and secured. Like I said, just go back through and fix them. If you hadn't supported them like I did and then tried to bend them, they would just fall right out of the nail and then it would be a much bigger repair to make. After you have them done, I'm going to get that darn nail glue. Um, we're going to be gluing them into place, the good fairies. So pick a fairy, any fairy, and hold it down. You're going to have to just hold it as still as you can. The nail glue is going to be a very temporary hold. It isn't going to hold it there very well. It's going to be just a little bit of a quick fix. After they are secure enough on there and you've got one or all three, depending on if you want to do one at a time or kind of get all of them in place and then go back through, you're going to want to secure them to the wire with some clear acrylic. And you really want to use clear acrylic. You don't want to use, um, it might be seem like a good idea to say use blue on the back of Meriwether because she's blue, but a color acrylic is not nearly as strong as clear acrylic. You want to make sure that you're using a very strong product to hold something like this together. It's not necessarily for viewing, it's for strength. And so if you want something for strength, you want to use clear regardless of situation. If it's if strength is its only purpose, use clear acrylic. And I've talked about this in videos in the past quite a bit, but I haven't mentioned it recently. The reason why clear acrylic is the strongest compared to any color or any glitter especially, but anytime you add pigment or glitter or additives of any variety into the acrylic. What they're doing is if you think of acrylic polymers as Legos, you have Legos and they clip together when the acrylic is still, when the polymer is in powder form, all of the Legos are just like in a big bucket. They're not attached to each other. They're not clipped together. They're loose, right? So then your monomer is what writes the Legos and puts them together. It's what creates that chemical reaction that basically snaps all of the polymers together, creating a hard product like acrylic, a multi-chain oligomer. And if you add anything to this. So you have your Lego and then you put a plastic bag or whatever in between. You could probably still snap two Legos together with that plastic bag. But then if you add two plastic bags, three plastic bags, every time you add more between each of those blocks that are snapping together, it's getting less strong. It's the strength is being compromised. So if you want something that's strong, you got to get rid of all of that plastic bag, all of that pigment, all of that glitter. It's got to be out of there. And then you're left with a really strong, stable product. So I hope that that little analogy, I think that's the same one I've used before, but it's just a great way to think about it if you, you know, if you've never really put it together that way. So if you wonder why I'm such an advocate for encapsulating things with clear acrylic, that is why there's a lot of companies out there that tout that they have products that don't need encapsulation, um, different acrylic colors that, you know, you can just use that color as your overlay and you probably can and is probably just fine. But in the off chance that it's not, 
maybe try some clear acrylic. So if you've had issues with overlays breaking or anything of that nature and you just use a color acrylic and you don't encapsulate, maybe you want to try. And if you're doing it for strength and you're not worried about color pigmentation protection or like protecting the glitter, so you don't necessarily want the glitter on top, you can do a very thin layer of clear acrylic on the base of the enhancement and put color on top of it. It really doesn't matter as long as there's some clear acrylic within that enhancement, it's going to add significant strength. So with that being said, when you're wanting to add strength to the back of something or hold something together within a design like this, you want to use clear acrylic just as much as you want to use clear acrylic to add strength to an enhancement and its structure. So like I said, I haven't explained that in a long time and it's just one of those topics that I explained several times in probably within a year or so and then I thought I'd give that topic a rest for a while since everybody that had been watching my videos had heard it but there's so many new people around now that if you hadn't heard that it's just a good little reminder or if you had heard it sometimes it's easy to forget so we're going to go through we're going to be detailing our aurora and our good fairies with acrylic paint and another thing to remember when you're doing something like this is when you're detailing something and you're painting on top of acrylic that has not been filed has not had any gel products applied over the top of it so even if you filed it there's still little bits of, of coarseness. There's texture to acrylic. It can be filed and buffed and smoothed out. And if you do a lot of that, it's probably not that textured. But if you don't file it at all, there's just a texture left over. Gel products do not glide over that texture or like fill in the texture. They skip over the top of it. So if you want to use a gel product on top of a design like this, it just probably isn't gonna give you the best results. So I always like to use acrylic paint when I'm painting on top of something like this just to have the best possible results. Another benefit of using acrylic paint is it is cheaper. It is significantly less. You can get a large four ounce bottle of acrylic craft paint, at least I think they're four ounces, the average little ones, um, four ounce bottle of acrylic craft paint for about $2, give or take. And so that's a big difference than a 15 milliliter thing of gel paint for $20. It's crazy. So if you can save your gel paint for things that really gel paint needs to be used for and instead use acrylic paint everywhere you can, if you're a nail artist on a budget, then that is just a fantastic option. And you can buy acrylic craft paint at so many different stores, Walmart, Target, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, basically anywhere that has a craft department is going to have acrylic craft paint. And you don't even have to get anything fancy. So use that as much as you can. Otherwise, apply some gel sealer over the background of this design once you're done with it. Some matte top coat over all of your beautiful characters. And this one is all done. The last thing I'm going to do is use some gel paint. I'm going to be adding some sparkle to Aurora's crown and necklace. But that is it. I love this one. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. This was my absolute favorite movie growing up. I was such a huge fan of Aurora and the Good Fairies always cracked me up. So I've never done a, a design of those characters specifically, so I had to add that to my repertoire. I hope you love it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!